Aloha, this is Kevin Kimball, and the purpose of this video is to provide a mathematical proof supporting the general rules for the creation of the statement of cash flows. So we're going to start with something very basic that all of you should be familiar with. This is the balance sheet equation, which says that assets equal your liabilities and owner's equity. What this really means is the things that you have that are going to provide you benefits in the future have been obtained through debt financing liabilities and equity financing owner's equity. Now if we were to continue down and think, okay, let's simplify that just so we can read it a little bit easier uh, as we go through the proof. We'll say A equals L plus OE, assets, liabilities, owner's equity. Okay, let's continue down. If assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, then that should mean that the change in assets in a given year should be explained by the change in the debt and equity financing, your liabilities and equity. So we move down a little bit and we come to this proof. The change in assets is explained by the change in liabilities and owner's equity. Well, as we try to get towards understanding why there are certain rules for the creation of statement of cash flows, let's break out the change in assets into two things. Those two things are your change in your current assets and your change in your long-term assets. In other words, total assets are broken out into those that are more liquid, those that um, will be converted to cash or at least save you from having to spend cash in the next year, those are current assets, and your long-term assets. So let's go ahead and break that out a little bit further into its component pieces. So your change in assets is now your change in current assets and your change in long-term assets. Okay, So we're going to underline that guy so we realize that we're going to focus on these as the initials. And then, therefore, the change in current assets plus change in long-term assets should be explained by or is equal to the change in long-term liabilities and change in owner's equity. Well, since we're trying to prove how cash changed, that's what the statement of cash flows does, we're going to break out current assets into cash, which is part of current assets, and then all other non-cash current assets. So let's take that down a little bit further. So in other words, the change in current assets is explained by the change in cash, plus the change in non-cash current assets, plus these others long-term assets, which will be equal to the change in liabilities and owner's equity. Okay, continuing on down. Let's take these change in liabilities and break those out into its two component pieces, the current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Okay, Because current liabilities are going to be mainly related to your operations, and long-term liabilities will mainly be related to your um, your financing. You notice I'm color coding these. You'll notice that things that are green are going to be used in your operating activities section. Things that are blue will be used in your investing activities section and things in red will be used in your financing section as you prepare the statement of cash flows. Okay, well if we wanted to get the change in cash by itself so that it's explained by all the other stuff, what we need to do is get, we need to deduct your change in non-cash assets and your change in long-term assets from both sides so that cash is over here by itself and then we'd have a, um, a minus non-cash current assets and minus long-term liabilities over on the other long-term assets on the other side. So let's go ahead and deduct that from both sides. See that? So I'm deducting I'm deducting this from both sides. You deduct it here, deduct it there. On the left-hand side, they eliminate, so you have just the change in cash. And on the right-hand side, you wind up getting stuck with those uh, minuses on the other side. So here's your new formula. Your change in cash, which is what the statement of cash flows is trying to do, can be explained by the change in current liabilities, change in long-term liabilities, change in owner's equity, minus the non-cash current assets, minus the long-term, minus the change in long-term assets. Let's continue on down. We need to break out our owner's equity because some owner's equity is contributed equity, equity financing, uh, contributed equity financing. Now there is internally generated equity financing, which is more like uh, operations. So let's break that out into its two component pieces, which is contributed capital. That's like common stock, additional paid in capital, common stock, preferred stock, all those contributed equity items and then the internally generated equity items which is your retained earnings, the earnings that you've retained. 
And as you can see, the contributed capital we've colored red because it's going to be a financing activity on the statement of cash flows. Let's continue on down. Well, retained earnings comes from or is impacted by two primary things. One is net income and the other is dividends. Okay, so you see take retained earnings. The change in retained earnings is caused by the current year net income and the current year dividends. As you notice, net income is primarily related to your operations, so we're going to use that in explaining the operating activities. And dividends is dividends paid is related to your financing activities. Okay, continuing on down. If you group all like colors together, in other words, put the green things, which are operating activity related, all together, put the blue, which is only one by itself, and then the red by themselves, you get the following. Changing cash is equal to the operating activity related items, the investing related items, and the financing related items. Well, if you take those and you put them in a vertical um, order, as you would see on a statement of cash flows, you say operating activities will be prepared primarily focusing on these items. The investing activities will be explained primarily by focusing on those items. And your financing activities will be primarily explained by those items. So if you add up all of these operating, investing, and financing activity cash flows, you'll come up with change in cash. And that's the, that's the bottom line. And so um, I'm just going to stop there. But the, the main thing that you should see is why when a non-cash current asset such as accounts receivable, when it goes down, do you add it back to net income? Because it would be minus a minus. So if your receivables are going down, then you add that back to net income to arrive at the true cash from operating activities. If a current liability goes down, it's plus a minus, therefore as a current liability like accounts payable goes down, you would deduct it from net income in arriving at cash flows from operating activities. So that's uh, just a quick discussion and hopefully it'll help you understand why we have these rules as we do. Okay, aloha.